Hi, welcome to the AOI. I'm Nate Kitch and I'm an illustrator. The AOI Illustration Awards exhibition is really important to me because it's the pinnacle of what I've achieved so far. Um, when you leave university, you're always worrying how you'll do in the field, like how work will come to you. It's always very, you know, chops and changes like waves. You never know when it's going to come. And to be able to have work that I've achieved at university and then to be here exhibiting with other great illustrators and artists is, uh, is a, you know, really important to me and really important to my career. Who knows what opportunities will come from this? And it's a really good platform for me to develop on a young and early stage of my career. So it definitely means a lot to me and I'm really excited to be part of it. I became an artist uh, through studying it. I, at college, I didn't really do the arts. It just I don't know why. Maybe GCSE, the way that you have to recreate the work of another artist didn't really appeal to me, so I chose not to sort of follow it up. But after finishing college, I joined an art foundation in Eastleigh under Sebastian Hegarty, and he really sort of made me think about how I, I worked, and it changed completely how I worked. It made me think what I was doing, what repercussions it had to the audience, and generally what, what it is to be an artist, and it just made me have so much passion for it again. I always had had, but it, it made it sort of blossom again. Whilst I was studying, uh, Peter Lloyd from Southampton Solon uh, School of Art and Design came in. He saw what I was doing. He saw that there was something exciting, even though it might not have been illustration. He took me on. Um, he said, there's basically a place for you here if you, if you want to come, and I sort of took him up on that, and I just didn't really look back. There were times where work was difficult, and I wasn't fitting in, being more of a fine art background on illustration. But then I started listening to what they were actually saying to me and, and changing how I worked and trying to develop my style. And now I've landed on something that's really strong and it's really consistent. It's still room to develop, but there's always an anchor point of the work that I create. And I owe, you know, Pete Lloyd, Johnny Hanna, all those illustrators, Carrie Amphlett, Louise Ware, uh, for who I am and where I am today. And, and knowing that this is what I want to do and being able to do it and exhibit is, is really exciting too. Art forms that influence uh, my work would definitely be, uh, you know, geometric and abstract art. Uh, my dissertation was on geometric abstraction. So, you know, even from like cubism, like the works of Picasso, where you're just sort of trying to shift and, and change uh, the perceptions of the body and, and scenes, uh, that really excites me. But then also, you know, constructivism, uh, supremacism like uh, Malevich, um, his work with sort of black squares on white surfaces, the idea of the fourth dimension, shapes passing through. It was all these great and grand ideas coming from what people will be like is just shapes on a canvas. But there's a lot more to it than that, and, and there's things to read in. And that definitely follows through in my work. Um, I'm really interested in shapes and pattern. And they always seem to be the backdrop and how I start and, and apply with textures. That sort of shows how that influence inspires what I do and, and changes how I work in the fields and in my pieces. The subject of my talk today was uh, my war-winning project, which was on Oliver Sacks uh, and his book, The Man Who Took His Wife for a Hat. It's a series, uh, well, it's a book where each chapter is about psychological patients. Each chapter is given to a certain patient and what their condition was. The award-winning piece was um, Lost Mariner. That's the one that I entered. And uh, it's about a man who suffers from Korsakoff syndrome, which is where you lack the ability to create new memories. So everything he sees now is just almost lost. It's, it's just a void. So he still thinks he's 19. He thinks he's young and on submarines working as a mariner. But he's not. He's, you know, 50, 60. He's an older man. And when he looks in the mirror, he can't perceive who that person is. It's an older man, but he still in his head is that young 19-year-old. And it was such an interesting piece to have to, you know, to, to, well, I chose to do it, but it was really interesting to represent that in an image that could portray the story and welcome people in to, to the image and what I was trying to tell them. And I think that's what my work's always been about. The journey has always been, you've always had a story to tell and doing it in an abstract way, but letting people in has always been the problem. And now I feel I can let people in. So uh, it's nice. And, and I think the award-winning work sort of shows that. Uh, the exhibition is sort of that you know, first step in allowing the audience to be engaged in my process. So it's a nice feeling. Visual metaphors and abstraction of the mind was the, the name that I gave to my talk and, and what the piece was about. It was really sort of a title to of what I thought I was explaining. I didn't want to just have these are Oliver Sacks and his patients. It was interesting what I was doing with that story. It's difficult to tell the story and make your viewer understand that, but when you're telling a story that is just in the mind and is an error of the mind, there's no particular way to show that. The only way you can show that is through finding a journey on yourself and your image making and trying to portray that 
Uh, and the way to do that is just through experimentation and, and creating metaphors, visual metaphors. So these patients have an abstract mind, you could say. It was an abstraction of their mind. And in doing that, I was trying to tell a story which was a visual metaphor. So I guess it's a play on words of what I did, um, what I do now. Um, I always like to find a different resolution to an image. I don't want to just draw you know, something simple. I want to create something that makes you think a little bit, something a bit out of the ordinary, but I guess that's a term that anyone could say about their work. I just like to, you know, test test people, test the edges of it, see what see what can be achieved. Uh, you can find my work uh, on my website, which is natekitch.com. Uh, I'm also on Twitter, which is at natekitch, and I have blogs and things. You can all find it, it's all linked in, so it'd be great, you know, follow me and see what I'm up to. I always like to tell people what I'm doing. Um, I'm looking at doing an exhibition sometime in the future, whether that will be you know, with my schedule, but everything you, if you want to see what I'm doing will be on Twitter and my website. You can see work that's coming up, you know, people that I collaborate with or talk to. Maybe if I'm doing a few more talks, they'll be on there too. Um, but yeah, that'd be the best way. And, you know, say hello. It's always nice to hear from people. And even if it's critical, I love people being critical. It's good to be challenged and it's good to hear other sides of opinions of, of what you do. So, and even if you just want to say it's really nice and uh, you did a good talk, that's nice too. Or you can say it's rubbish and I don't like it. It wouldn't be a problem, but yeah, get in touch and see what I'm about.